dead lighters. Hey, deadheads. <laughs> I like that. Right, I like cool. deadheads. What up, deadheads? It's Sam. It's Leslie. Let's start over. <laughs> What up, Deadheads? It's Sam. It's Leslie, and we have good news. Really good news. We're doing a live event. We are. At Hex Coffee in Chicago, Illinois. It's going to be a horror trivia night, y'all. Hosted by me and Leslie. Yeah, the people who are here. The people that host this show are going to be hosting those. So please, if you are in Chicago and you like trivia and you like coffee, come on by. Yeah, and there's also beer and food. Friday, March 31st, 7 p.m., Hex Coffee. See you there. Cool. That worked. Nice. I'm sure I can take some, one yeah. of those. Yeah. Don't you want it? 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 Welcome to the Deadlights Podcast. I'm your host, Sam Johnston. Hey, I'm your other host, Leslie, bringing you your weekly dose of horror, everybody. Ah. Woo, woo. Ah. I'm horrified. Oh, I was so scared. I thought I would start the pot off with a good fright since we really didn't get that good of a fright <laughs> in this most recent episode. And why do you think that is? What did we see? Well, we watched Dreamcatcher from 2003, directed by Lawrence Kasdan, written by Lawrence Kasdan and William Goldman. <laughs> Friends on a camping trip discover that the town they're vacationing in is being plagued in an unusual fashion by parasitic aliens from outer space. You know, this is a movie review podcast. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what we do. We mm -hmm. review movies uh, with our honest opinions. And I feel like for the most part, we're we're pretty, you know, lenient. We're pretty good about finding the best yes. in every movie. And we're going to definitely try our best to do that today. Mm -hmm. But just a forewarning to everybody who's watching and listening, we did not really enjoy this film that we just watched. I think there were two points um, in watching the movie that I wanted to stop. Mm -hmm. I wanted you to reach over and just stop the movie and then for us to just talk about what we've seen thus far and then fill the other podcast minutes with us something talking about else. something else because yep. <sighs> yeah so like i said we're gonna give our honest opinions mm -hmm. and these are our opinions yes. so totally if you love this movie if you enjoy <laughs> this movie that's awesome and Everything has value, and we're about to try to find the value in this thing. Because yes. we've set out to look into the deadlights, whether we like it or not. <laughs> that is true. So that here we true. go. Let's start it off with the camp. Mm -hmm. How this thing is actually made. Um, at the beginning, actually, I was really enjoying the color tones that they were playing with. Because uh, yeah. they were definitely specifically picking colors to go with certain uh, moments of the movie this movie deals a lot with like we already said in the log line a group of friends who have been through a lot together and so we are getting flashbacks of things and the flashbacks are colored in a very orange very soft uh almost dreamy kind of light and then the present when they're adults very cold very bleak blues uh like very steel um removed and, from just like the hue mm -hmm. of the color and everything was just like i said it felt cold and then you got the little pops of red mm -hmm. from either what, what someone was wearing or blood or the parasitic moss that's floating around and that really popped and so those were kind of cool shots at least of like the actual color grading that they were yeah. playing with and we're going back and forth between when the main characters are children and and when they're adults so we're dealing with things that happen to you as a child coming back to you as an adult you mm -hmm. know thing decisions that you made coming back and having effects positive or negative on you as an adult and i thought that that was interesting that the color grading in the flashbacks was kind of this orange reddish hue. And then 
we are getting pops of red and orange in the present. And so it's almost like their past is kind of like seeping through whether they like it or not mm-hmm. um, in those like little moments. And it, for the most part in this movie, it's danger, you know, yeah. because they have a parasitic alien trying to get them. So, um, but it's kind of bubbling forward in this very bleak blue world. Because mm-hmm. um, they're in the middle of freaking nowhere. Cold. It seems like. Maine. Yeah. Maine. Maine. Yeah, they're yeah. in cold, like winter Maine. Winter Maine. That's some cold ass shit. Yeah. Um. Well, when it comes to the script writing, it's a different story. <laughs> that is very true. Um. I can't say much about it. I was left confused a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. Um. It seemed that we had. St- a lot of characters, uh, very much like it, where we just had our core group of kids that are already like six of them. And this one, there was five, including um, Duddits. Duddits. Yeah. Um, uh, you had the element of like super human powers uh, with aliens, with farting. <laughs> Bitch in a buzzsaw. Rick ate some berries in the woods. Oh, no. <laughs> like, to you, was that intentional of it trying to be? I think that the the main problem with this script is that they're trying to adapt a Stephen King novel. And that I feel like they, they've done it. They have done it well before. Mm-hmm. But in most cases, I feel like Stephen King books that have been converted into movies do not play well. And because Stephen King's horror, a lot of the time is so cerebral. It's so in your mind that when they try to take that and make that into a movie, it just reads as silly. And mm-hmm. it kind of, it's hard to translate that. And it, I think that also this movie suffered from trying to sum up an entire book because that's where I think this script got lost is it was trying to keep together all these plots that we didn't necessarily need that the book had in it that's okay for a book. But when you're trying to bring it into a movie, it's like, yo, too much. You're trying to speed through these storylines too fast. Too fast. That Then it just muddies the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You're getting different genres within the movie um, and you're just lost. You're you're left just like having to consume and, and put apart this movie that just like doesn't work. Mm -hmm. It was hard. (laughs) It was. To watch. It was hard. It was hard <laughs> to care about the characters. It was hard to care about the villains too. I felt like there was a couple villains going on between Mr. Gray, aka Evil Jonesy, and also Morgan Freeman, which felt kind of like a throw-in bad guy too. Yeah. The story got very muddled, m- muddied down by the amount of story that mm-hmm. they were trying to put in, and I think that that comes from trying to convert a book yeah that is true you can be i guess like you can have multiple uh scenes within a chapter and it probably will make sense more than Mm -hmm. what we got um also there is just a lot of flowery kind of text that is loves me i know that he loves us all I can't stop thinking about the duds lately. How about you guys? Duds. It's this place. He's all around here, even though he's never been here. The real world, this shit never passes my lips till after five. And if it ever does, buddy, I'm on the wagon for life. Glad to hear it, Pete. It doesn't help, too, when you have flowery text being delivered by bad acting, which is really weird considering the cast list of this movie. Like, we have 
almost every actor is recognizable. At least. Oh, yeah. We might not know their name, but you recognize them from something. Mm -hmm. And none of them were good. Well, let me just say this. They made Freed and Morgan look bad. Morgan like, Freeman? What did I say? Freed and Morgan. <laughs> When I respect people, I say their last name first, okay? Freedom Morgan. Freedom Morgan. Freedom. Morgan Freeman. Uh, terrible. Like, so, he was... That's he hard. Was, that's, isn't that hard to believe? Like, Morgan Freeman actually giving a really bad performance. I, it is, because, like, the text and the edit. Mm -hmm. Like, and also the directing. Mm -hmm. Well, let's not get all girly with each other, bucko. Just tell me how we do it. We're going fast and hard. And how do we come out? Clean and smiling. No. All right. Well, the last thing that I'll <laughs> say about the can, the only th other thing that I really noticed stand out, like intentionally, mm -hmm. of what they were doing was there was a lot of heavy shadows. And especially in the beginning, they were shooting a lot of uh, heavy shadows, like through blinds or windows onto Jonesy's face, who then becomes like half mm. evil like he's the one that becomes possessed by the parasite mm -hmm. in the end so i was like they keep shooting him in very very heavy shadows at the beginning what's going on with him turns out obviously he becomes part of the parasite um but also at certain points it felt like it was too dark like there were some times when i was like i can't really see what's going on like, exactly there were such heavy heavy shadows a lot of snow they were like you know, really filming in a place that was cold mm -hmm. um, and snowing. And through the snow, I couldn't see what the fuck expression. I got nothing from those scenes. I couldn't because I couldn't see people's faces. Just so people understand, we are watching on an at least 20 foot screen that is very brightly <laughs> lit. And so we should be able to see things. Yes. And so the fact that we were struggling to see what was going on, I was like, Damn, they are they're underlighting things. And I think that they were trying to set some sort of dark mood and it worked in some scenes, mm -hmm. but at a certain point overall I was like, I'm struggling to see what's going on. And also through Damn that through. <laughs> through um through um those scenes, it's reading as surrealism. You know, you're taking it. And, well, not surreal. Realistic. They're realistic. There's not a lot of, you know, like, extra things that are going on. So it is something that I can, I don't know. Shit. I hit the mic. <laughs> Edit that part out. <laughs> and action. Um, I don't know, like, I don't know what to say. It's just like it, it. It reads as just like it being normal, but then it's not normal because then there's people farting and there's aliens, and then the aliens sh shape shift as well. Yeah, they're trying to yeah they're trying to make it feel natural without it. They're trying to make it feel real, but everything else it doesn't feel real about it, no. like the acting and what's happening, and it's not working together. It's not working. Yeah, exactly. We, <laughs> we, yeah. So all right. Um, let's get to Little this meat. piece of meat, meat. this mm -hmm. very odd piece of meat, because I feel like they are trying to talk about things, but then because the story of what's actually going on becomes so complicated, we kind of lose what's actually mm -hmm. kind of trying to be talked about because at the beginning we're dealing with like a group of friends and yeah. things that happened to them as children. And they have been affected by their their entire lives by a person. This this person that they are all connected to, which is a special needs kid that they end up saving from these bullies one day. And they all just have this like very sweet connection to him. Mm -hmm. And they always look out for him. And it kind of has been the thing that seemingly has held them together also because that kid gave them supernatural Super powers. Head. Yeah. And so they're also connected by that. So at the beginning, I was like, okay, they're like trying to play with things that happen to you as a child that affect your entire life. And then things that, that are happening to you as an adult, you learn from things that you 
that happened to you as a child to overcome them. I'm like, okay, I'm starting to see this. I'm starting to see what's what they're trying to say. And then the story unfolded, and I was like, wait, the fuck? All right, wait, we totally forgot about that whole message that was going on, and we just got completely lost in the woods of the story. Because we enter with the psychologist. And he has he's he's he has a patient with him and he's talking about, you know, how he overeats. Barry, do you think this compulsive eating has something to do with thinking you killed your mother? That you're eating yourself to death as punishment? You do think you killed her, right? It's looking like the therapist has been feeling bad about being able to read people's minds. Mm -hmm. Like it's burdened him. Yeah. And we and I actually that's why I'm saying I kind of like how this movie starts because we start with him. We see how he's dealing with the powers that they've been given. We then go to Jonesy. We see how he's been dealing with the powers that he's been given. We then go to their other friend. The car dealership the, guy. Pete, yeah. Pete, the salesman. He how he's using it to, to pick up ladies. women. Yeah. And then we go it, to the last guy who they call Beaver and my name is Earl guy and he's just a drunk and he just it seems like he's just trying to drink it away. So that's why I was like, oh, OK, cool. We're, we're seeing how all these different characters are dealing with this gift, mm-hmm. quote unquote, that they've been given. And I was like, all right, this, this is a kind of a cool starting off point and we'll see how they then all come together and use it in the end to defeat the thing. But then it uh, turned into a different movie after that. It turned into we, eight different movies after that. We got like action with Morgan Freeman yeah. and his like soldiers. Um, well, and I think that this this nicely transitions into the cup because those ideas that they set up at mm-hmm. the beginning, that piece of meat that they presented to us at the beginning of the movie as the movie went on as they cooked it did not come out at all it came out completely it was undone essentially because but i mean i like rare i like rare meat sure god damn this was like still on the cow yeah well (laughs) well because it was like (laughs) what did they learn because half of the kids got killed before they even realized what was going on. Three out of the five died. Yeah. And then the last two that were left were just in an action movie in the end. And there was no like cathartic moment of like, wow, like we did it to get because we were together. Like, no, nothing. And I think it it is because they were juggling so many subplots that were going on that there was no time for any sort of emotional moment or emotional catharsis that these characters could have. I guess what we can draw from it, I just thought about it, because the last two standings were the counselor, maybe professor, professor character, yeah. and the psychologist, who are actually, you know, using their powers for good. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know, maybe that's why they're the survivors at the end. But there is not a sing. Oh, the mom was the only woman in this whole movie. Yep. It was just nothing but men. Yep. Like. Does Stephen King hate women? He might. <laughs> like, and there were some sweet moments, like I said. Like, even as a, as adults, when they were interacting with Duddits, you know, I was like, okay, this is like, like dude love. Like, this is actually kind of. So- kind of sweet that they nurturing yeah that they care so much about this guy for so long and i was like that's that is actually kind of nice i i I like that bit about their characters but it just doesn't translate ah it it just doesn't translate (laughs) at all no it doesn't and i mean (laughs) it just i think you're right though when you said before like a really, really, really good director might be able to take even those lines Mm -hmm. and get someone to a point of at least feeling, even if it doesn't sound that natural, at least feeling what they're saying. Mm -hmm. 
We didn't really, it didn't feel like anyone was feeling even what they were saying. Nothing. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they were left confused too. Yeah. I mean, I would have. If I would have gotten that script, I would have been like, and what's this scene? What do we have here? Because we have the counselor slash professor having scenes in his mind. Okay? Stay with me. He is in a tower in his mind, which is a library of his memories. The What they call it? The memory... Chamber? The memory warehouse. The memory warehouse. Okay? He's in it. And the way that he's able to see through the eyes or I don't know what's happening in real life is through a window pane. And it is the most Harry Potter fucking shit. But also... <sighs> It's so terrible. I love the idea mm. of the cham like memory chamber. Love that. I agree with you that memory warehouse idea is cool. And one of the rare times when I felt like, okay, like this is definitely a Stephen King thing. This idea of someone being able to sort through their memories in their head. Like I can definitely see him writing that in a book. And it was like, oh, okay, like they actually kind of translated it well. Mm -hmm. But then, like him, like looking out the windows, and it was like green, clearly green screen of the next scene. It just turned hokey, oh, and again, so there was just not enough time terrible. for them to like stay in the space for it to be worth it. And then, yeah, what memories was he protecting? We never even learned because it ended at the end. Yeah, it just black. We said SSDD means suck some dirty dick. Suck some dirty dick. All right, well, let's. Let's get to the thrill of this thing, if there was any thrill, the <laughs> scariness. I mean, okay, so between all these storylines that we have going on, it is a monster movie. Mm -hmm. We do have a monster running around, this like parasitic alien thing. What'd you think of that? What'd you think of the, <laughs> what'd you think of the what do they call them, the shit weasels? Um, that was the actual name that they gave for the shit weasels, which were these leech things that came out of the people that were farting mm -hmm. through their ass and leached onto people. It looked like some big ass worm thing. Yeah. Um, but then are those people now infected? We that, would think so, right? Because they had to be in quarantine because then. I was so confused by what those things did. Like, if you get bit by one, are you then growing one? But then they laid eggs, too. So why yeah. do they need the humans to... Exactly. They laid, they, laid, blah, 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 blah. they laid eggs so fast. So fast. One of them was born, all of a sudden, birthed an egg. Egg. How? Immediate egg. That is the shortest lifespan. Yeah. It's like flies, right? They don't have the longest... Life spine, but they have to mate, and uh, their eggs take time mm -hmm. to grow. Yeah, it was so confusing, and also because we we know we have a big alien too, which we see like Jonesy sees the big alien thing, and it seems like that worm is like just one of its minions. So I was confused what the purpose of the worms were even. It's probably explained way better in the book, but we didn't have enough time or space to explain it. Well, what I gathered, because, um, you know, Jonesy, Jonesy, right, mm -hmm. is the, the alien is taking him to the sewer system mm -hmm. water so system it, needs, it wants to go into the water supply yeah the water supply yeah. so it seems like excuse me oh no i have one oh. ah! um <laughs> um that the worms get into the body to essentially grow but also reproduce like it is like an earthworm it doesn't need a mate in order to mm -hmm. reproduce. So then shoots out of the body through the ass. Through the ass. Um, and weasel. then its whole point is to then keep a tie. Get more people. Get more people. Get more people. 
I don't know. You know, well, those people died after it came out of them. Maybe it's okay. Maybe, maybe it's feeding. attacking it to then then put the egg in. Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, it, 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 there's not enough information for us no. to figure out. Maybe you should just quickly read the book. Some time later. Oh, I get it now. Wow. Wow. That made yeah. more sense in the book. Yeah, well, whether we understood what mm-hmm. the fuck they were doing or not. <laughs> um, there were some cool, like, practical moments with the yeah. worms. Um, there were some cool, like, puppetry things going mm-hmm. on. Uh, but it was mostly CGI and, like, quite honestly, bad CGI pretty bad cgi and also there was like that final fight Mm -hmm. at the end where we have like the big evil jonesy worm thing and then old duddits who this entire time oh no spoiler he's he's an alien too which they totally didn't allude to at the beginning no and also he's dying from leukemia he's an alien right you would think that he anyway he turns into another alien and is able to merge with it and like explode it, it or something and that all looked terrible too that looked they look like they were CGI. fucking yeah they did they were they look like they were inside of you well i think what happened i don't know this is how i took it here we go leslie's uh, take done it had to stab him as the alien and he put the leukemia in his body Okay. In the alien's body. Okay. And that's how they died. I don't know how they got into a fucking cocoon of whatever the fuck they're made out of. Because, like, they're... Okay, so the aliens can also... They can morph. They have a tail kind of thing. Very similar to aliens. But with three other... Or, like, two other pointy thingies. So, in total, there's three of them. Um, And also, it's, like, very phallic-y. Because there's, like, some foreskin that comes... Definite foreskin. Um, out of it or around it. Um, and yeah, so like they can also like be they're like can become spores, spores. in the air because mm-hmm. there was like the moss that was also growing because of them. Yeah, like in in the in the cabin that all the dudes were like having a good time in before all of this. Um, there was the one of the worms had created a nest and started birthing a bunch of worms like things and the house became very that i like that set mm-hmm, of it mm-hmm. uh very much like spreading red like think of stranger things mm-hmm. um war of the worlds for sure world of the world 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 yeah for sure yeah that but, was cool that was cool and because it was red it like really popped too oh yeah looked really cool like that yeah and then there was also this kind of like uh the evil jonesy aka mr gray and and Jonesy were sharing the same body, so there were scenes of him like going back and forth between <laughs> Mister Gray and Jonesy, and it was very like Smeagol talking to Gollum. And for some reason, the alien has a British, British accent. Ac- what was that, Mister Jones? What did we just pass on the road there? Are you speaking to me? Yes, I am, Mister Jones. Or is it Jonesy? Really, Governor? Really? really? We're gonna need that, Governor. I mean, what uh, that choice of it being British to me was just like they asked the actor, like, "Do you have any accents?" Mm. And then he was like, "I have this one." Yeah, like, how do you want to make him different? You know, I don't know. Yeah, how? I yep, yep. It was the most theater thing I've seen. Um. And where they're like an actor's like, oh, I have this talent. They're like, oh my god, perfect! Mm-hmm. There you go. Great. Yeah, awesome. we'll we'll throw that in there. Sure. Sure. Why not? Let's not even think about it. And also, the one character, I don't know if this was the actor or the director's choice of having this character carry a toothpick in his mouth. Beaver. Throughout the whole film, whole except when he was a child, 
which had nothing to do with anything. It was just kind of like, oh, this guy is cool, so he has a toothpick. You know, it was that whole fucking stupid. The one, the one scene where it really, trait. really came up was a a scene in which they were really trying to build tension, which is they bring the guy in who has the parasite in his body, and the guy's in the bathroom, and they break into the bathroom, and the guy has shit the shit weasel out <laughs> into the toilet, and they've trapped it inside the toilet, and Beaver is sitting there trying to keep it inside the toilet while fucking Jonesy goes to find tape forever and then i mean beaver's gotta get his toothpick out so he opens his box of toothpicks but uh oh i dropped it all over the bloody ground and there's only one toothpick that is not in any of the blood and he's trying to reach for it while also trying to sit on this toilet and not let this shit weasel out but he's also trying to reach for it and also not letting this shit I was like is this really going on right now is this really how we're trying it to build tension the longest scene he seemed like he was a heroin addict for his toothpick like I need or it a now s- a smoker that's I, what I was thinking I couldn't I, I can't wait yeah yeah, yeah. Um, it was a failed failed tension building scene for me if it was just that scene they compiled all of that scene and just it be that where there is a two friends who had been camping they bring in this person who is could die of hypothermia or starvation they bring him in try to take care of him he has a parasite inside of him. They discover a bloody room and then him being in the toilet and fucking dying. Let's go from and, there. Yeah. And then just be that scene. I can see this as a little mm-hmm. vignette in those um, like VHR, uh, VHS and mm-hmm. ABC of death, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Yes. Love. I would have loved it. Yep. I would have thought it was so funny and creative on how to like die cut out all the other bullshit that's it that's it that's the only scene i like from this movie fair Fair. with the shit weasel with the shit weasel and also honestly i'm fucking afraid of parasites i am i hate them so much so that for the thrill was actually scary Mm. but anything else not at all yeah once we got into it, it was like, okay, nah, too much, too much. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I just want to pull this concept apart. We have the aliens who can morph, are morphing into what we consider aliens to look like with you know, that diamond kind of looking head and, you know, the black kind of eyes, no mouth, no nose, no ears. Um, They morphed into that to kind of get the humans to kind of be sympathetic, Mm -hmm. you know? Or just like in awe or in some way. That's how I'm I'm reading it because they're actual, you know, quote unquote, um, uh, look, yeah, I guess. Their true form. Their true form is just this big ass worm who has a, a slick kind of mouth mouth with yeah. lots of teeth. A lot of, very vagina dentata. <laughs> but isn't there a worm that is, you know? It looked very much like a leech, where it's like that very open mouth and just kind of yeah. sucks onto you. Just, yeah. yeah. Which is. A leech is, I think, a is parasitic. It is. So, it's a parasite. It yeah. needs a host in order to grow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. And I like that kind of monster. Like, the idea of that is gross and is scary because that does exist. Um, and I, I like the idea of the leech then morphing into a more alien human-like mm-hmm. uh, thing. Um, it's kind of like... Bring your guard down. Yeah, yeah. because that's uh, when Morgan Freeman and his crew went to go and bomb the alien sighting. 
Um, they had morphed. There was a bunch of aliens out there that morphed to look like that alien that we we know of. Mm-hmm. I guess in love. I guess we love. We him. love so. We love aliens so much. Love them. Um, but yeah. Anyways, yeah. And then they got bombed, and then they would turn into those creatures. Nasty thing. But I like the idea of like an alien knowing that they look disgusting and we would be afraid yeah. and not want to go near. Because that takes it like beyond a physical monster and makes it something else that's getting in your mind mm-hmm. and can understand and manipulate you in a, in a certain way, which is what it was doing too because it was taking over people's bodies. Yeah. Uh, and using them as hosts. Um, yeah, yeah. Last thing I'll say in the thrill because it has to do with one of our bad guys is Morgan Freeman, who, like we already said, doesn't come in until about 40 minutes into the movie. (laughs) And I think is supposed to be like this general that has gone insane because he's been hunting aliens for so long. And so now he's just willing to do anything it takes, like bombing an entire town. If it means stopping the spread of this parasite and these aliens. Um, But, I was like, okay, he's supposed to be like one of our main bad guys, but I just kind of forgot about him. Yeah. He, like he was introduced really late and then he like leaves for a while and I was like, oh yeah, he is a character in this movie. And also, I don't see how he's terrible. They didn't explain that enough. It what He didn't seem, because cr- they said the words, he's gone insane, which I believe that because the guy who can get into people's minds said that, but he didn't seem like that. There was nothing that he was, yeah, you're right. There's nothing he was doing to make us believe, oh, he's cracked. No. Uh-uh. And that's when the direction comes from, because mm-hmm. uh, goddamn, Morgan Freeman is a good actor, and you did not use him to your abilities. I would have loved to see him as some insane, like overzealous kind of general that like bloodlusty. Like we gotta hunt these guys down no matter what. Like I didn't, f- I didn't feel his twenty five years of hunting these aliens no. at all. No, and. It doesn't have to be absolutely expressive and be like over the top no. insane. No. You know? It could be chill. It can be very rigid, but like he wasn't either of those two. He was just very normal, saying really weird catchphrases and being Morgan Freeman, which it just like didn't work. It just wasn't it enough. It didn't work. It wasn't enough. It's like they got Morgan Freeman. They're like, "We got him. We don't have, <laughs> yeah, baby. Well, that's it. We don't. This we don't movie, even have to direct him. This Perfect. Movie is sealed. We we're done. We're done. And wrap. <laughs> we haven't even started filming yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was unfortunate. Don't. That's I was like, damn. Like that could be a cool role, like uh, a scary, an actual like scary role because that's a human. You know, we're getting mm-hmm. that's the human side of the villains. You know, that's the human bad guy, and it. And then he just dies in an explosion, and I'm just like, okay, bye. Bye. In the stupidest fucking way, too. God damn. Yeah, bad. All right. So bad. Let's get to the ride, huh? Uh -huh. Let's get to the ride. I mean, we've said it multiple (laughs) times. Disjointed. We have a movie that's trying to be too many things. We have it trying to be The Thing, which is kind of this like Mm -hmm. snow cabin in the woods isolated kind of horror movie with a parasite running around imitating people we got it with Mm -hmm. like you know you're we were revisiting our past as like kids from the flash from flashbacks and we're learning things to like help us as adults and like the whole superpower stuff and then we also have an action movie too with fucking morgan freeman running around shooting at aliens in his helicopter <laughs> and i'm like at that point i'm like what are we watching right now pick one please yeah. please just pick one and they didn't no and then um we forgot to mention the swipes uh swipes side swipes oh my edits. god the star wars like <laughs> fucking swipe transitions yep. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> they did it once. I was like, okay, that's an interesting choice. And then they did it three or four more times. I was like, okay, someone's right. getting a little trigger happy with these. It, it, and it's those kind of sudden, out of nowhere kind of concepts that come in and just adds to the pre-existing story that we're trying 
to perceive, trying to just like mel over and it was work um, in which I did not like because uh, I got nothing from it. Uh, so I would say that the ride was way too bumpy. Really bumpy. To be able to get anything solid enough. Yes, agreed. Adding to the disjointed, the, the really the one of the only positive things I wrote down in the ride was I still just think it's kind of sweet that all these guys have this very close yeah. relationship with each other and with this special needs man. And that's just kind of sweet to see. All those times when they were together as kids and as adults, I was like, mm-hmm. aw. Aw. Okay. You know, that's what you want from a, a group of people. Yeah. You want to know that you're being taken care of mm-hmm. and um, be there for one. Any, like one. Oh, God. <laughs> and be there for each other. There yep. you go. Fuck, I couldn't say it. Yep. Yep. And. But. I wish there was more of that, but no. Yeah. We just got. A lot. We got too much. We got too um, The script was awful, awful, awful. That I I try to walk away once. You did? Got, um, no, you did walk away well, once. What you, was I'm surprised you line? came back. I don't know. I wrote. Okay, so I got some <laughs> lines that I wrote down. I got um, right when the guy who had the thing in his stomach came in. Uh, grilled cheese, anyone? Grilled cheese, anyone? Grilled cheese, anyone? And he like screams it. And I was like, does. dude, there's two people in this room <laughs> and they're right next to you. And then let's see what we got. Um, oh, this one was pretty good uh, when they're like rounding all the people up mm-hmm. because we don't know who's infected by the parasite. So the army, of course, is putting people into like bunkers and shit. Uh, we're going through the crowd and an old man is like, you can't do this to people in America. <laughs> It reminded me very much of, this is America. I thought this was America from <laughs> South Park. <laughs> you can't do this. We're Amer- you can't do this to people in America. Um, yes, it actually happens all the time, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you but can. yeah, that whole scene, by the way, was shot behind the POV of Morgan Freeman in the suit. Yep. Which I liked, mm-hmm. but also didn't work with the rest of the movie. No. There was, oh, there was like that moment was good, and then there was one other moment that I was like, okay, that I do like because this is one of the few moments that we got to see Morgan Freeman actually being evil Morgan Freeman, which was a cadet or something comes into his office oh, that's yeah. fucked up in some way, and he's like do you promise that you won't do this again? And he's like, yes, I will. You got to do your scouts honor. And this whole time he's loading up a gun Mm -hmm. and he's like, you got to do scouts honor. Promise me that you'll never do this again. Scouts honor. Stop your bloody lady back. And then behind him, the blood splatters onto a map of Maine. And I was like, Mm. that's kind of cool like that's very foreboding and kind of a a cool little indicator that first of all this guy's really bad second of all there's gonna be some bloodshed in maine tonight probably yeah and so there was a couple moments where i was like that scene worked that shot worked that color worked but not enough not enough things we didn't bring it all together. Things were a little easy. Mm-hmm. So I think with that said, let's get to these smash pumpkin ratings and okay. let the people know. Um, I believe you went last time. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go first. I'm going to give this a one. One. A wow. one. Um, what? What was that one for? That one was for the scene in the fucking bathroom in the toilet. Because overall, if that was an actual scene and that just being that, I would have loved it. Um, that's it. That's it. That's what the that's one was it. for. That's, that's it. it. I have nothing else to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For the first time. Yeah. Yeah. And I got to agree with you. I have to give them, obviously give them credit for 
making a movie. Making mm-hmm. a movie is fucking mm-hmm. hard. So you made the movie and But did you, they need to? <laughs> you, you got it out there and you made it and I'm happy for you because you know you did it and it's hard. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. there was like I just said, there was those specific moments of I can see some art art artisticness in there and i can see aesthetic and i can see you trying to do something besides that it really really did not deliver on anything else and i i'm gonna give it a one as well um and i know we just really ripped into this movie hard but like with every movie that we watch this i will still encourage people to watch it go watch it because i'm curious to see if anybody else is going to get it or like it. Yeah. And I would be curious to hear people's thoughts of things that we have talked about mm-hmm. things maybe that we missed to make it more clear of what was going <laughs> on. And just in general, watch movies, you know, watch wonder, horror movies. Okay. So normally we do t- talk high about um, movies. You know, we have our opinions here and there about certain things and, you know, People can agree or disagree, but I wonder how easy or hard it is to hear a review that's so terrible. Like, yeah, do you all find this interesting when we yeah. review a movie that's bad? Because I'm interested to know if people disagree. Like, I would love to hear people disagreeing. Absolutely. I mean, I more than please, agreeing. We encourage anyone to comment or message us or whatever your opinions and thoughts about any movie that we review. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important that we do. That's why it's important that we do review these movies, even even if we know we're putting a movie in the bucket that we know we don't like. I think it's important for us to still talk about those movies because it just goes back to this idea of you know freedom of speech freedom of thought uh being able to talk about these things and have a discussion a conversation about art and the point of art is to sometimes disagree about it Mm -hmm. and i hope there's someone out there that absolutely loves dreamcatcher this is their favorite this is their favorite movie and they get something out of it because that is what art is about is Mm -hmm. taking your own thing from it yeah and this is what we took from it and that's okay that yeah, there's some fine. there's some moments in there in Dreamcatcher that still are, you know, nice. Yeah. And yes, <laughs> we this is a show about giving ratings, you know, and that's yeah. the point of it. And that's just what we do. But the real point of the show <laughs> is to just appreciate film yeah, and appreciate and horror. watch movies so y'all. please watch it um please watch this one too like why not fuck it why not why not um you bored put on this movie put on this movie <laughs> and so yeah i'm let us know if you if you like our negative reviews as well but listen you come here for the sam and leslie truth so yeah and that's what you're, you're gonna, waiting baby you're gonna get it you're gonna get it all right dream all catcher right. let's put this one to yeah. bed huh Ba-boof. Bye-bye. Close it. Let's, chuck it. <laughs> let's see what we got for next week. Yes. Huh? Let's, let's move on. I believe it's you. I believe I was the person that picked this one out <laughs> last week. So That is A-OK. Let's see what we're getting. I've got one. <gasps> OK. Uh, let's see. What do we got for next week? You're going to get this immediately. A young FBI cadet must receive the help of an incarcerated and manipulative cannibal killer to help catch another serial killer. Oh, baby. A madman who skins his victims. Oh, we all know what it is. It's yeah. the classic Silence of the Lambs. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fun. Nice. That's going to be a good one. Well... Thanks, y'all, for Thanks, y'all. coming over. Thanks for coming over. Thanks for uh, hanging out with us and catching our dreams. Yeah. And oh, our nightmares. That's another thing we didn't talk about. 
Either did they. Why is he, it called didn't. Dreamcatcher? I'm sure it went into it in the book. There was <laughs> images of Dreamcatchers around, but besides that, it was just, no, no. Hmm. Yeah, it didn't work. Didn't deliver. Anyways, let's get fucking out of here. You can find me on Instagram, color me Leslie, everybody. And, and me at BP Britchy T and us at the Deadlights Pod. Deadlights. Also check out Playground Social, which is the studio that we're recording this from. Mm, mm, mm. But until next dream catcher, <laughs> let's get spooky. Oh, I'm catching your dreams and going up your butt. <laughs>